Fermat's Last Theorem French mathematician Pierre de Fermat wrote this deceptively simple statement in 1637 that became mathematics' most famous unsolved problem for over 350 years. The theorem states that no three positive integers can satisfy the equation x to the power n plus y to the power n equals z to the power n when n is greater than 2. While you can find whole number solutions for squares like 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, you cannot find any whole numbers that work for cubes, fourth powers, or any higher powers. For example, there's no combination of whole numbers where one cube plus another cube equals a third cube. What made this theorem legendary wasn't just the mathematics, but Fermat's tantalizing note in his book Margin, claiming he had a proof that was too large to fit in the space. Finally, in 1994, British mathematician Andrew Wiles proved it using advanced mathematical techniques that didn't even exist in Fermat's time. Pythagorean Theorem This ancient theorem discovered by the Greek mathematician Pythagoras around 500 BCE is one of the most famous mathematical principles ever created. It states that in any right-angled triangle, the square of the longest side equals the sum of squares of the other two sides. In simple terms, if you have a triangle with one 90-degree angle, there's a special relationship between all three sides. Imagine a right triangle where one side is three units long and another side is four units long. Using the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we get three squared plus four squared equals c squared, which means nine plus 16 equals 25 so c equals 5. This theorem revolutionized mathematics because it was one of the first to show that geometric shapes follow precise mathematical Today, the Pythagorean theorem is everywhere. Architects use it to ensure buildings are square. GPS systems use it to calculate distances. And carpenters use it to create perfect right angles. Bayes' theorem, developed by Reverend Thomas Bayes in the 18th century and published posthumously in 1763, it remained relatively obscure until the 20th century when it became fundamental to statistics, artificial intelligence, and scientific reasoning. The theorem states that the probability of an event occurring given new evidence equals the probability of the evidence given the event, multiplied by the prior probability of the event, divided by the total probability of the evidence. In mathematical terms, the probability of A given B equals the probability of B given A, multiplied by the probability of A divided by the probability of B, where A is the hypothesis and B is the evidence. The theorem combines what we already know, prior probability, with new information, likelihood, to produce an updated belief, posterior probability. Consider a medical test that is 99% accurate for a disease that affects 1% of the population. If you test positive, Bayes' theorem reveals that you actually have only about a 50% chance of having the disease, not 99%. This counterintuitive result occurs because false positives are more common than true positives when the disease is rare. This theorem is essential for modern machine learning, spam filtering, medical diagnosis, and scientific research. Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Developed independently by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz in the 1660s, this theorem revolutionized mathematics by connecting two seemingly opposite operations, differentiation and integration. The theorem states that differentiation and integration are inverse processes, meaning one undoes the other. In simple terms, if differentiation tells you how fast something is changing at any moment, integration tells you the total accumulation of that change over time. Imagine you're driving a car. Differentiation helps you find your speed at any given instant, while integration helps you calculate the total distance you've traveled. Before this theorem, calculating areas under curves was incredibly difficult, requiring complex geometric methods. Newton and Leibniz showed that if you know how to find derivatives, you automatically know how to find areas and accumulated quantities. Euler's identity. Swiss mathematician Leonhard Euler discovered this equation in 1748 that many consider the most beautiful formula in all of mathematics. The identity states that e to the power i times pi plus 1 equals 0, connecting five of the most important numbers in mathematics in one elegant equation. The number e is about 2.718 and appears everywhere in nature, I represents the square root of negative 1, which allows us to work with impossible numbers, and pi is the famous ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. When you raise e to the power of i times pi and add 1, you get exactly 0. This stunned mathematicians because it showed that seemingly unrelated areas of mathematics, geometry, algebra, and calculus, are deeply connected at a fundamental level. Prime Number Theorem this theorem reveals one of the most beautiful patterns hidden within the seemingly random distribution of prime numbers. 
Conjectured by Carl Friedrich Gauss in 1792, when he was just 15 years old, it wasn't proven until 1896 by Jacques Hadamard and Charles Jean de la Vallée Poussin independently. The theorem describes how prime numbers become less frequent as numbers grow larger, but in a surprisingly predictable way. The theorem states that the number of prime numbers less than or equal to a given number n is approximately n divided by the natural logarithm of n. Consider the number 1000. The theorem predicts there should be approximately 1000 divided by the natural logarithm of 1000, which equals around 145 prime numbers. When you actually count them, there are 168 primes, showing that the approximation improves with larger numbers. For 1 million, the theorem predicts about 72,382 primes, while the actual count is 78,498. This theorem is crucial, which forms the foundation of modern cryptography and computer security. Four color theorem. This theorem was first conjectured in 1852, but remained unproven for over 120 years until mathematicians Kenneth Appel and Wolfgang Haken finally solved it in 1976. The theorem states that any map drawn on a flat surface can be colored using only four colors such that no two adjacent regions share the same color. In simple terms, whether you're coloring a map of countries, states, or any other regions, you never need more than four different colors to ensure neighboring areas are always different colors. Try this with any map. You'll find that red, blue, green, and yellow are always sufficient. What made this theorem famous wasn't just the problem itself, but how it was solved. Appel and Haken became the first mathematicians to use a computer to prove a major theorem, checking over 1,400 different map configurations that would have taken humans decades to verify by hand. This sparked huge controversy in the mathematical community because many mathematicians believed proofs should be verifiable by human reasoning alone. 